Hey, what's up guys? My name is Nicholas Corsell, and you're watching The Literary Nomad. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some issues I've had writing my second novel and why it's okay as a writer to sometimes not follow through with your goals and let your readers down. For the last year or so that I've been working on this novel, I've been really convinced and, and certain really that I would publish it at some point in 2024. I had picked out November as my goal for publication, so November of 2024. And recently, despite hitting my daily goals, I get at least 500 good words in every day and I have for well over a year, I realized that there's really no way that this book is going to be ready by November. And if I publish it then, it will be a product that is not the best that it could be. And as such, I don't think that I really, you know, can afford to put out my work that is, is not of the quality that I know it can be. And this got me thinking, because recently I was going through Twitter and saw yet another thread of, of fans making fun of and, you know, making memes out of George R. R. Martin taking forever to finish the Game of Thrones series. And I'm not a fan of Game of Thrones or really fantasy at all, but it got me thinking, you know, these, these people that have loved his world are irate and, like, very, very upset that he hasn't published a new book. And I know that it's been, like, 12 or 13 years since the latest edition, and I get how that could be upsetting to a fan. But basically he tweeted that he has been working on them. It's just, it's taking a long time and people have theorized why that is, maybe plot, world building, etc. But it really made me realize that as, as writers, it's our responsibility to, to hold back our work, even if that means disappointing fans, right? Because the absolute worst thing that he could do or, or any of us could do is publish a story before it's ready. Um, everybody's complaining that it's not coming out, but, but they would complain so much more if he released something that wasn't up to par. And while for a lot of us underground, more independent writers, um, people maybe wouldn't freak out or even notice if we published a book that wasn't ready, that's not how you build a career or reputation that you're proud of. And so I think it's been really big in my development and my evolution as a writer to really come to terms with that and resist the urge to, to set these, these, I don't know, arbitrary goals, like these time-based goals for myself and really just approach these creative projects as, you know, it'll get done when it gets done. And people with more analytical brains or that are more logical, like I think that that's really how I fall. That's a pretty difficult pill to swallow. Um, I love to have deadlines. I love to operate um, under self-imposed rules, right? Like I am a big fan and proponent of decide how many words you're going to write and write them every day no matter how you feel. If you decide you're going to write 500 words a day, six days a week, do that, even if you're sick. And even if those 500 words are completely impossible to use, get them out so that you don't break your habit. And that has served me very well. I think that one of my strengths as a writer is my productivity, um, and that's really never dipped. But sometimes, I overthink these things and I will, I'll set a goal and I'll say, okay, I want to publish this book on, on this date. And even if it's not ready, or even if the, the book, the short story, the video, even if it's not ready, I'll force it out. And it really made me think about with my first novel, I published it maybe about a month or so before it was ready because, you know, life got to me and I'll make, I might make a different video about that one day, but circumstances caught up to me in the month leading up to its publication and I cut some corners with the editing of my first edition of that book. And what happened was two to three months after the fact, I had to re-edit it and release a second edition. So not only did I create a, a lot more work for myself, I had a book out in the world for a couple months that I would not have been proud of people paying for. Now luckily that book didn't, didn't catch off. It didn't really sell a lot of copies in that time period. Um, actually every single copy I sold was sold after I made the updates. And so I really dodged a bullet there, but that could have been something that could have severely hampered my career, right? Like what if I would have gotten four or five bad reviews because of the sloppiness? And it would have looked like a project that I had spent years really, really working hard on was an afterthought. It was something that I had just thrown together um, and maybe even looked like a cash grab when that wasn't what it was at all. And it really was just birthed out of this neurotic desire to to fulfill these self-imposed deadlines. And that's something that I'm really, really trying to, to abandon this year and moving forward. And I think that that is a massive thing that a lot of creatives would benefit from. I know that creative industries as a whole have this stigma that these, that these creative types 
um, are lazy or don't do anything all day and, and, and to a degree I can see how that can be true but I do think that there is something that we can all learn from people like George R. R. Martin and that is that no matter how big or small you are um, the work that you create is going to affect how people view you. It's not going to affect how people view anybody else. And as such, you're responsible for what you put out. You're going to be judged um, in 50 or 100 years if you're lucky enough to be remembered. You're going to be judged for what you put on the page. You're not going to be judged for how long it takes to publish it. Because right, I've read a bunch of Dostoevsky books. Um, if you put a gun to my head and told me, um, how long did it take in between each of these books for it to come out? I have no idea and I really would doubt that anybody except for maybe like a Dostoevsky scholar has any idea whatsoever um, With the exception of maybe like, you know, the story of the gambler how he how he wrote it in a couple weeks and things like that but but broadly speaking the point is true I think that You have to be loyal primarily to your own creative instincts and your own creative intuitions and just keep these projects in development until they're ready to not be in development anymore. And so with this second novel, will it come out in November? Maybe, but probably not. Um, and it might be two years, it might be three years, it might be six months from now, whenever it gets to the point that it is ready. And that's really the only way that I can ensure that, you know, it is what I want it to be. And that when I sell it and give it out to people to read, I know that whether they like it or not, it's what I want it to be. And I know that this is a very controversial take, but I think that we all owe George R. R. Martin a great deal for proving this or, or making this point on the grandest stage possible. I can't think of a single writer that's more famous than him, except for maybe J.K. Rowling, that would just have the gumption to stand up and say, it's not ready and it might not ever be ready. And if it's not ready by the time I die, then I will just burn all my manuscripts because nobody else can finish my work. And by doing that, he said, basically, you know, I appreciate you all as fans and you've given me a career and mean a great deal to me, but at the end of the day, this work is, is an extension of me, not of you. And as such, it has, that has to be safeguarded and preserved at all costs. And that's something that I really want to incorporate more into my daily workflow. I mean, of course, I'm nowhere near his level, but I think, you know, we can learn a lot if not everything from the masters, you know, like that's who you should always be looking up to and saying, what do these people do? And incorporating that into your, uh, into your daily life and your workflow. I don't know, this is a bit of a rambly video today, but I think the point here is, is incredibly important. And I think it's a, a trap that a lot of creatives fall into, especially in this modern American hyper obsessive culture that we live in, um, where everybody has to hustle for everything all the time. And, and if you don't have 25 side hustles going on, you're a failure and everything is just so, so monetization based. I think that this is something that we all could benefit from a little bit. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Nicholas Corsell, and I'll see you in the next one.